Hi, good evening everyone. Welcome to The Paula Show. Tonight it's our pleasure to present to you part two of my conversation with Mr. Fitzmorgan Greenaway. And we're speaking about how tourism and agriculture can complement each other. Thank you for staying with us on The Paula Show. We'll be right back after this commercial break. In part one of our conversation, we spoke about a national plan for farmers. What are some of the inputs that you would have made into that plan if you were asked mm -hmm. to participate? First of all, when you start to think about production, mm -hmm. you need to first look at the locations. Okay. We have three different types of soil. So then things are going to perform better in a particular, in a particular area. area. Mm -hmm. So we have to identify those facts. Mm. What would do best, where, mm. and when? Timing is important yes. as well. Yes, because we still suffer from the four seasons. Spring, summer, autumn, In winter. Antigua? Yes, we do. Things do better at certain times of the year. Mangoes, and summer. Ah, right, <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. So there you go, so yeah. you, you're seen with me. Mm -hmm. So, let's take, for instance, carrots, yes. onions. Mm -hmm. During the, what we call the short night, sorry, the long night and short day period, they perform better. Long yeah. night, short day. Yeah, we do have it. Long night, short day? Yeah. Okay. There are times in the year, Paula, I Come know the January. longest day is in June. <laughs> no. Longest day, yeah. You're yes, correct. the you're longest day is yeah. in June, yes. But sometimes in January, Paula. Yes. 6.30 is still black in the morning. Yes, and 6.30 and five, in the evening and five, is dark. And 5.30 is only done dark. Right. It's already oh, dark. Oh, short days, long night. Long night. So, cu not cucumbers, but carrots and onions, onions would go better in the first quarter of the year then? Well, no, in the last quarter, they'll do better in the coming into the Christmas season. Okay. November. But you'd have to do your planting and preparation sometime between late September, October. How long does it take for carrots to reach maturity? You have varying varieties. You have 60 day variety, you have 70 day variety, you have 90 day varieties. Okay. It depends on what you're looking for. All right. So if you're, you're, you're thinking of supplying, uh, a chain, mm -hmm. supermarket, supermarket chain, and you know, well, you can look in your storerooms and you can see, well, okay, look, it looks like we're going to be short in the next two months. So you have to think about lead time so and all months, of that. So two months, so well, let's, let's put in a 60-day okay. variety. Okay. So it will, it will complement what you're, you're trying to achieve. Help you to complement. Do you realize that in my, in my master's studies, I'm just sitting here and thinking that, I could manage a farm. Exactly. Because what you're saying there, it's about lead time. Okay, I have this, but given that I have to supply one of my clients, I have to make sure that it's planted by a particular time so I can harvest it by this particular time and have enough time so to get it to market or get it to the supplier. So that's how we do sweet potatoes. So we plant a set of potatoes. Yes. February, mm -hmm. we plant a set March, mm. we plant a set April. The person who works in town has a 30 day period where they wait, they wait to get pay. Yes. So we have a 30 day period of, of planting. So when we start to harvest, we are planting now for the next eight months, but it's the same amount we're planting every month. Because mm. we have a certain amount of clients or customers that are taking yes. this product from us. So we're not knocking our heads all over the place. Where are we going to sell it? How am I going to get it? We know sold. where we're going to sell it before we plant it. 
but then you might have a glut on the market of the potatoes so why don't you do you have a system wherein a number of plant a number of farmers plant sweet potato then a number of farmers plant carrot no, it, and it, 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 so so that you don't have everybody planting the same at food the same at the time. same time so I you think that, it. I think that each farmer should try and do one or two crops. I, I believe in that strongly. Mm. Yes. But do it in large quantities. Can you imagine some of these farms in Antigua that are already doing nine and ten and fifteen crops but, and you're now limiting them to two? But I'm saying I'm just being honest and very yeah, but they're objective. They're going to think Paula. that they're not making money. No, they're going to make money. The, the thing about it, <coughs> the That's cost something. of agricultural products are about the same, you know. If you look at the time, the production time, you would realize that, that, that the cost overall is about the same based on the yield. Lettuce, 30 days. But those are quick crops. But what you have to put into that, and then you get $3 per head, right? Or maybe you go to the extreme and get $5. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to sell to the bulk, in bulk, you might be getting just $3. $2.50, but you don't mind because you're taking maybe a couple of hundreds off of you at a time in a day and it, it, it's gone than to sit down and wait to sell one for five dollars yeah so that's just business again i see your point <laughs> so if you're producing two crops you will have a ready market all year long yeah. for those crops but it's the volume now the two that you you you, you you're, you're producing you will increase the volume and you will still make money. You have more land space now available yes. too. Your client or your customer mm -hmm. is happier. The other farmer who grows what you're not growing, yes. you can always go by him and buy if you need. Yes. Or he can give you some, whichever. But it allows him now to take full control of the market based on the commodities that he's growing. Mm -hmm. And it allows you, the other farmer, to take control of the market again now based on the commodities that you're going. Well, you, all of us going yeah. the same thing. And, there's a and then nobody the getting nothing said. No, so in, in, in addition to the national plan, agriculture plan, for which the government and the Ministry of Agriculture should be responsible, and in collaboration with the farmers and other stakeholders, you know, tweak it and make it workable, mm. the farmers now have a responsibility to create a marketing plan and to create mm -hmm. their own plans which are branches from the national plan. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want them veering off track. Proportionate responsibility. Yes, you don't want Everybody them has a role veering to off play. track of the national plan. No. Whatever plans you have, it must align. It must be in alignment with the national plan. Exactly. But the farmers also need a marketing plan and the farmers need the farmers need a group, PR, all of that, because it's a huge business. Amen. It's a huge Amen. industry. Amen. And Amen. you can't think of it as a hobby. You have to think of it as a business. And that's what it is. It is a farming enterprise. <laughs> it is a business. Mm. So we know that every month we need X amount of hundreds of pounds of pork. Yes. Because these are the clients we have. Do you eat pork? Yes, I eat. Boy, you like to talk about yeah. pork. <laughs> I don't eat pork. There, there are two things that I don't like to eat. What's that? Soap and blue. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <But> I, I, <laughs> World Food Organization, WFO, it's, it's a member-based association bringing together national farmers organization and agricultural cooperatives from across the globe. Its mission is to represent the farmer's voice and advocate on their behalf. Uh, locally, is anybody a member of the WFO, World Food Organization? I'm not aware. Not aware. No. Could be, but I'm saying at this point in time look, that I'm not Look aware. into because it's a global organization. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> you don't eat blue and... <laughs> soap. Blue and soap. <laughs> so you eat everything else. Everything else. Oh, boy. In between there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show. <laughs> We'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> if our soil 
is so nutritious and it supports nutritional growth of legumes and grass and everything that the animals vegetables. need. Vegetables. Mm. Everything the mm. animals need to thrive. Foods. Then the quality of meat should be good. Because whatever the animal eats, it will impact the quality of the meat. So if our quality of meat is excellent, yeah, we are the overseas markets to receive these meats. It is possible yes. to produce pork mm. for export. Because when we look at what Antigua needed, mm. some years ago we were self-sufficient in pork. Mm. All right? Um, we needed only about 150 carcasses between 80 to 100 pounds, and that supplied the local demand. About 150 carcasses. Per week? Yeah, 80 pounds to 100 pounds per carcass, and that would suffice our so local. So many people eat pork? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, wow. Now, when you look at 150 yes. carcasses, you can say you could use 12 farmers to produce 12 mm -hmm. carcasses. So you're involving a wider cross-section. 12 farmers, 12 carcasses, that's 12, 144. Four. So you can yeah, give and take week, yeah. 12 to yeah. 13 farmers. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, you could break it down and say give 24 farmers yes. six carcasses. Yes. You'd have a wider network, right? And you're talking about a farm having to produce six carcasses. Each 24 week. them. Yeah. But you could go further, 48 producing three carcasses. So you could have 48 farmers who, whose business is going on every week. They can supply three carcasses. The, the three carcasses. Now for export, you could go higher now. Mm -hmm. So we could then see how much of that we could export. Yes. Um, how much of that could go to, to fresh pork? How much of it could bacon. go to bacon and... Um, processed. Um, and you know, when people are cooking, they season smoke, rice, they need the All the pig tongue, and, and the um, pig, pig tail and pig snout, all, all those can be collected afterward mm -hmm. and be done in one processing um, facility. So you're saying there's it, a possibility that we can export pork? Yes. Yes. But the number of You cattle, have to count the number. The what? number of cattle might not be at the no, level as yet not at this time not, not at, at this, this time. time maybe years ago but we, not yeah, at this time but what we could do though we're talking about in the future we're being futuristic yes you're talking about maybe a 10 year 15 yes. year plan down the road if you have a proper plan if you have a proper plan for for yes. increasing yes the number of livestock in the mm -hmm. cattle yes sector then you could then start to export but it has to be planned Growing up in Freeman's village each week, the farmers would slaughter cattle and pigs and goats. In those days, people didn't think about going to the grocery store no. to purchase meat. The fresh meat was always there. When I was smaller to Paula, mm -hmm. I remembered we had pigs, we have types of pigs mm -hmm. that we never gave them any antibiotics. No, no, they no, were, no. They no. were hardy animals, you know. They, they, would, they, they ate grain. They would give, they would give birth, um, and you would not be even there. Today, That's true. today, I have to be be there to assist my pigs. Why? When they're giving birth, not all the times, but some have complications, and you have to be there to Aww. assist the process, right? Our pigs were hardier. Today, we have to give the pigs. Um, a lot of antibiotics here and there for this or that. Um, not only antibiotics. Um, vitamins. So we have to give them vitamins <laughs> and, and all that. What? Um, Sounds like a baby. B complex. We have to, B complex? Yeah, we have to, we have to give them their, their tonic and their, 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 their medicine. Yeah, so they, they, they are healthy, but the point I'm raising, you have to do all this and that with them. Whereas before, it was a hardier pig. And the pig just grew. The pigs grew, and everything you ate 
and the, the vegetables that we would peel, we just throw them into the pig pen and they, they ate them. Pigs would eat mangoes that are, that, that, that are not good for human okay. consumption. Everything, you took it to the pig pen and they would just eat it. Okay. One thing I'd say to you, though, I, just a few weeks ago, I was um, at cabinet mm -hmm. and we were talking about the same thing with the pigs. Mm -hmm. And I had to let the minister know mm -hmm. that we don't feed our pigs with slop. So we don't throw the old things in the, in the pen anymore. Well, when we, I was growing up, yeah. that's what we did. You know that. Yeah, but we, <laughs> we, we now give our pigs. Grains. Yeah. We're careful of this well, hotel food. Are, and uh, The pigs are sophisticated now. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. But it, they, they're much more healthier. You have yeah. to be careful, too, of what you feed your animals, all right, because it can affect them. You can get um, slop from people's house, yeah. and it has in pepper. And the pig eats that pepper. And you can kill oh, the pigs can't eat pepper? No. You mean there's something hot that pigs pepper. can't eat? <laughs> Too I much thought, of it. Hot I pepper. thought pigs ate if it swallow everything. If it, no, it can, 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 can damage it. Oh, no. So, you know, you, those are some of the things you want to be careful of. I remember, too, growing up and spending time in Freetown with in-laws. And there were so many goats in that region. And someone was telling me that there were lots of goats in Cedar Grove. And, but I know for a fact, Freetown, Browns Bay area. But even though we still have, as you were saying, quite a number of goats and sheep, it's not like in the past. Okay. The land, that entire Browns Bay area from Freetown, oh, nothing used to be out there. That's true. All nothing. Bush, All bush. Bush and trees. All right. Um, Wilkie's. Yeah. That whole area. Okay, I know no they have an extension. Okay. This is like see, in African places like that where humans encroach on the animals' habitat. And so the animals are now roaming around in villages and places where humans live. And sometimes they harm the human beings. But those are wild animals, but goats and sheep. Sheffield's estate. Yeah. Uh, um, in, 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 in going out there for Marble Hill. Mm -hmm. All the people who live in Cedar Grove would just let go the animals from Cedar Grove and they go all the way down there. Marble Hill. Yeah. They'd reach all there and then they come back home at night. So those areas had a lot of goats. Five Island. All those No, no, you're inhabited by human ah, beings. <laughs> so it, it, it's creating a problem. So that's why I'm saying So it creates a problem for the free grazing. Yes. So that's why I'm saying yeah. there, there are three basic um, ways of rearing small ruminants or livestock. Mm -hmm. You can have what you call a fully intensive environment, a semi-intensive, all right, or a free roaming. So tell me what's the difference? Be well, free roaming, I mean, that doesn't need any explanation. But, the, they, the, but there's a lot of risk there involved. You have vehicle coming into, co yeah, into contact with... Pradial arsony. Yeah, pradial arsony. And then you have damage to people's property property right yes, and yes. farming yes. facilities yes so it's just not the property yes. only but also to mm -hmm. to homeowners not just homeowners also to farmers farmers because Motorists, when you release them they, people in the community just yes. imagine you have a bull that 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 that, 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 that that's boots it's an aggressive bull and that that bull goes into somebody's yard and run that the person still out happens? of there all those are possibilities I know when, when we were growing up, they, they would say, if you wear red, well, that's a problem. Those are myths. That's a myth. Those are myths. But are you mean these, these cattle that are roaming? They have the potential to. Oh. I am saying to you, I have a cattle. It's very nice to me. I, but I'm it might not be very nice to me. It might no, be aggressive. I'm saying it's very nice to me all year round, <laughs> except when it gives calf. When it gives calf, it becomes aggressive. Oh, because Supposing, maybe thinks that you're going to harm. Yeah. Supposing you have baby. a cattle like that, let go, and it goes into somebody's yard. It could trample the person. Ah, that's what I'm saying. So oh, all no. those are possibilities. So you know, that's, that's what so comes. So you see, when I'm walking that, on the street and I see them, that's and I'm, I'm trying to hide tail away from them, people laugh at me. Oh, Paula, they're that not comes going to from do the anything. free grazing parlor. And what about the semi-grazing? Semi-intensive is that when they come out, of the intense environment, somebody's there with them. So they, 
they so they're monitored. supervised. They're supervised. <laughs> they're not going this place. It sounds like a babysitter's and go, club. They, and going go here, there. Yeah. The fully intensive is that the animal stays in one place and you carry the food for it. Seriously? Yeah. So you take the hay, you take the water. Yep. I like semi-intensive. Semi I'm, semi but I'm <laughs> saying, to you, no, that's what you've been, been taught to believe. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying to you, in a fully intensive environment, my mortality, rate, my mortality rate, my mortality rate is zilch. I maybe have a one percent, or sometimes a, a half percent. Okay. Right. I don't lose my because kids. Because the, uh, the animal is contained. It's contained, and you okay. you deal with the environment. Yes. So you're able to, to monitor what's yes. going on. Yes. The animal gets up. There yes. is some shade mm -hmm. and there's a little shelter mm -hmm. and its food is there so it eats it's comfortable so the stress is less on the animal yes and when the animal has less stress mm -hmm. the animal performs more. better yeah so all of my cattle gives a calf every year wow every year i get a calf that's a lot of mating yeah no <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of mating once she gives calf <laughs> Within 30 to 60 days, she's back in heat. What? Yes, because her body score is in so such wait, wait, good wait, wait, conditioning. Wait. So in 30 to 60 days, she's in heat again. It means she can be impregnated? Yes. And then she just had a calf? Yeah. But remember, oh. she's nine months. She has the same gestation period as a woman. Like a, like a human. Well, there are some ladies so, like that, you know. Ah, <laughs> there, there are you two go. children in one year. There you go. You have one in January, <laughs> and the wish. next thing you know, one in by, December. by December. I mean, or very, very early or January. Or earlier than December. So, yeah. all right. So there you go. I guess we're all mammals. So we're all mammals. There you go. <laughs> it's amazing that we're speaking about when animals are not stressed, they produce more, and. You know, my mind is thinking about human beings in the workplace because the animal is actually working when it's producing, let's say, a mm -hmm. cow when it's mm -hmm. producing calf. Or giving the, milk. Or it's giving working. milk. We're feeding you to produce. Mm -hmm. So in the workplace, human beings, when they're not stressed, they equally can produce more. It's amazing how we can make that comparison between animals and human beings, and it remains appropriate. Because God made us to Paula. Yes. Not to be stressed. Yes. God created us for pleasure and all the better things of life. Mm -hmm. We, through our sinful habits, mm -hmm. have thwarted things mm -hmm. and bring stress on ourselves. So if we were created for pleasure at the beginning, mm -hmm. you can imagine you know, God had good intentions. Yes. Now the same thing in the workplace. Individuals will do better when they're not stressed. Yes. Because you feel comfortable. You feel like your boss you're cares relaxed. about you. You have the right resources so exactly. that you can perform you know, at your optimal perform exactly. at your optimal level. So too yeah. with animals. So if if let's say cattle, they're out in the paddock as you call it, or mm -hmm. in the pasture. And it's a cold night, very cold. It can affect them. Um, we Heat don't and cold no. affect. We, we don't not, have, it's not too we, cold. Not too bad here, yeah. like what you'd find in North America and Europe. Yes, yes. We don't have those kind of coldness. Mm -hmm. Or that excessive Hello. heat. Well, Sometimes it's 60 plus we, well, degrees we, here. It good. doesn't bother that's them. That's still good, that's still mm. good, that's still okay. good. So, you have the, the situation where we say the animal always needs shade mm -hmm. and shelter. What about water? Well, shade, that's part of his, his, his feeding mm -hmm. regimen. Yes. But if you provide, you don't, just, you don't just tie up the animal or leave the animal in sun mm -hmm. unendingly. Yes, I see that. Provide him with some shade. Yeah. Um, the cattle, mm -hmm. as a larger ruminant, is not. Easily. What's a ruminant? A ruminant is, is one that chews the cud. Okay. Yeah, so you have large ruminants, cattle. Okay. But it chews and then, it and then it regurgitates. Right. The goat is a small ruminant, the cattle mm -hmm. is a large ruminant. 
if that animal is placed in that environment, yes. stress-free, that animal is going to perform. It just, it is not going to do anything else but perform. But perform. If, a, if a boss treats his workers right, does good by them, all right? Give them their bonus when they deserve their bonus, and so on and so forth. Yes. What he has to do, yes. he, he does. And now in COVID-19, you know. He, he gives them their COVID packages yes. and whatever and so Sanitize on. the area, what? make sure people have water. And, they and, and, and as a result, what do yes. you think happens? Those yeah. workers are going to come to work, mm -hmm. even when they're not feeling well. Even when it's raining, yeah. like in Antigua, you know, it rains exactly. and people don't show up for work. Even when it's raining, Antigua. they're coming. <laughs> so here it is now. These animals, yes. just as the human will do, they'll mm. all perform because they, how they feel comfortable. I have noticed an increase in the availability of local eggs. Even on our roadways, people are selling eggs. Because we have, we're now producing um, what the local demands require. So why are we importing eggs? Um, egg is an egg, it is an egg. Yeah, but you see, it's not, it's not us per se, but there are some institutions that are given the, 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 the free way or free range to import some But of what's the difference? They're not any difference, they're not better, and we have enough locally. The local demand, we have enough. But what, that's, that, what, that's I, what confuses me because you, you, you read and you travel and people are saying buy local. Farmers are optimistic that their governments will work with them to ensure that after they would have produced, there's a ready market. What is the difference in Antigua and Barbuda? If we have sufficient eggs, why are we, Im why are we importing eggs? The authorities only can answer the question because there must be a license. <laughs> so who issues those licenses, in spite of the fact that there is adequate supply on the ground? So it speaks volume. And that's why I said to, to, to you earlier, we have to look at proportionate blame. Where the things are going wrong in regards to agriculture, all sector, government, ministry, farmers, supermarketers, hoteliers, all must play their part and all must accept responsibility. Consumers too. For, and consumers. Because we need to buy the local eggs. But, but what I'm saying, what we have now is, is, is the myth. Yes. Um, the, the, the it's it's local, it's the not song, good, good the, enough. The, the songwriter who said, uh, uh, um, everything black is bad and everything white is good and so on. <laughs> um, so we have those mindset that once it comes from America, it comes from outer Europe, it's better than what we produce here, which is not true. I am not of that. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Ilk. There's a part in Antigua now that I go. In Crosby's, where our friends from Lebanon and Syria live, and they have chicken coops. In they're now rearing, yeah, they're rearing yard fowl because they're saying that that egg is a healthier egg. They so raise it for their own consumption. Yes. Ah. They would buy it from us, you know, when they could get it. Mm -hmm. But now they, they, they have gone to the, the other wrong. And, the and they're raising it for themselves. Yes. You see what is happening to us. <laughs> yes. Right? We're yes. mimicking what somebody tells us yes. is okay to do. Our elders had it right. In order to be self-sufficient, you have to grow your own and you have to raise your own animals. They had it right. They had it right. They had it right. And yet still, there are some who think that if you don't have a master's degree, a doctorate degree, a bachelor's degree, that you cannot contribute anything to the conversation. But the elders had it right. Amen. And some of them didn't even have a primary school education. But it's common sense, you know. Remember, every child... Paula, mm -hmm. learns via observation. Yes. That's the first form of learning. If you are given the opportunity and the ev every other citizen is given the opportunity to analyze things for themselves be rather than being told what they should do, 
I am saying you that they would come with different decisions and, than, than what is going on And now. different ideas that they exactly. can contribute to the exactly. conversation. But you see, you just said it. You go to school, get a good education, get a good job. Yes. That's all we offer in Antigua. Yes. And I'm, I'm saying we all teach it. Mm -hmm. So it's a part of our learning cycle. Go to school, get a good education, get I a good job. I broke that cycle. I broke that cycle. I don't tell my children that. So my, my, because you see, when you know better, it's expected that you will do better. Exactly. You will think differently. Exactly. And so each generation should be better than the one before. Well, it's, it's a cycle. Yes. So our forefathers had issues, you know, mm -hmm. as to why they pursued the education. They couldn't read. They couldn't understand. So they, they forced their children forward. Yes. Go. Go, mm -hmm. go. You go and we, you help but, the entire family. I'm saying it's like, it's like but what happened? We, it's like the baby, the bath water, the rag and the soap. Throw them out. So we end up now, instead of understanding what's really happening, yes. we throw away everything. Cause we glad and no. the very thing <laughs> that we've discarded, others are coming, bringing it, packaging it, selling it to us when we could have been doing it ourselves. Final analysis, all of it wasn't bad. So you see what happened to us now? We just say all of it bad. So discard it. Uh, just throw the whole thing. And, and that, that was our problem. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show tonight. It's part two of my conversation with Mr. Fitzmorgan Greenaway. We're speaking about the value of agriculture to our economy. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Stay with us, please. Some time ago when I was growing up, there was a plot to plot competition that's true mm -hmm. but it doesn't happen anymore no that was a huge incentive for farmers this plot to plot competition yes um i would say it, um it helped it motivated them mm. um, okay, because many Motivation farmers look forward yes. every year for whatever prizes they would get and um it was done in such a way that they, they zoned it so you mm -hmm. could you know you could find a person in a zone get a prize yes. um and then you'd find an overall winner mm. or overall outstanding in the various sectors. So you displayed your produce, mm -hmm. livestock as well, or just yes. crops? Livestock, livestock and well? crops. Livestock wow. and crops. Uh, it started in 1963. 1963? Yes. That was before I was born. Yes, that's the year I was born. Oh, 1963. So you mean all the time I, we were growing up in Freeman's Village, you're older than I am? Yes. No, oh, I didn't realize I'm your junior. No, you realize. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. here we go. They started the mm. competition in 1963. And it was out of a need because the sugar was going out. Yes. If you read your, your, your physical geography in diagrams, you'd observe that in 1963 a drought affected the sugar industry in Antigua. Yes. And it was never profitable again. Mm. So right uh, um, during that period, 1963, they developed the plot to plot competition. Okay. That might encourage be farmers an incentive for farmers to, to expand do their production. To do crops. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Uh, vegetable crops, that yes. is. Because yes. that time it was king sugar. Yes. So it was so an since you're no longer dependent upon sugar, sugar. you have to find other avenues. And, and you're yeah. thinking of diversifying. Yes. So yes. you're encouraging the farmers mm -hmm. to to now do crops. Do okay. Not only root crops, but do other crops. Root crops meaning the tubers. Cassava, yes. Yes, okay. Yams, mm -hmm. potatoes. So that was So the, people looked forward to winning. Yes. Oh. Or see what prize money they would get yes. here or there. Mm -hmm. Now, out of, out of that, um, it worked well. Yes. It encouraged a lot of people. Um, over the years, the, 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 the competition changed in its dynamism. Okay. Because they used to, at first, allow everybody, because the judging would take place coming on to Christmas, mm -hmm. there about uh, even in January, um, because everybody had crops growing at the time. It was the yes. best time of the year. Mm -hmm. So some farmers complained later on as farmers got bigger, doing more crop production that some of these people only produce between the rainy period and they had nothing to sell. So then the competition, they started in phases of judging. They had three phases in the year. 
Okay. And then, so, so it, it's changed its dynamism, but it stopped in 2000. The last thing, the last commission was 2003 or 2004. But if something is working, why stop it? Well, the government would get sponsors oh. to, to do the prizes, and the government itself would be obligated to pay out some of these prize monies. It's no more, but it was an incentive. I haven't heard much about agriculture in Barbuda. I've heard about fishing, yeah. mm -hmm. seafood. But, but um, for, from all reports that I have received mm -hmm. over the years concerning Barbuda, they do very well, or did very well. Really? With coconuts okay. and, and the little yellowing that we have here, I'm understanding it's not over there. Mm. Um, they do very well with peanuts. Peanuts? Yes. Um, it is said that... Um, like the peanuts in... Oh, they maybe the they, salty they did. soil? They, they sandy. Sandy. Yeah, loomy. Peanuts ah. do very well in, in watermelons. They do very well with watermelons Water. oh, and I, butternuts. I need to go to Barbuda. Because I remember, watermelon is a desert plant. Yeah. So because it's so dry, it thrives very well in Barbuda. No, no, no. I'm going to link up with my people in Barbuda. Okay. So you know what I love from Barbuda? The cocoa plum. Oh, the oh, cocoa okay. plum. It's a, it's a red round mm -hmm. fruit and inside is white and fluffy. I bought some the other day, two bags from someone on Market Street. Mm -hmm. And I returned home, washed them. And if, you know, sometimes you're eating fruit and it feels like it's time, let's say time out, mm -hmm. because you taste the rind. Boy, I was so happy to be reconnected with Coco Plum. You didn't buy about it. I don't care. I just ate it. Yes, ate yes. all of it. Yes, it yes, was yes. so tasty. But they have a, a, a part to play. Yeah. Not only in the fishery. Mm -hmm. They have a part to play. In the in crop. The, in, 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 in the crop production. I didn't realize that because I because, don't hear much oh, about it. Remember I said to you, Barbuda. first of all, yes. you have to talk about the, what would grow best where? And the timing. And the, ti the timing. The timing so is... Here is, it is, yes. Barbuda. You'd get a very good production system going in Barbuda. Okay. okay. That would go with those desert plants, yes. watermelons. Because um, I think watermelons and peanuts and so would mm -hmm. do well even in the rainy period mm. in Barbuda because they already have a high water table. And, and I sandy. believe they. I believe also they have... Um, some measure of salinity in their soil. And help soil. balance these yeah. things out. So, so I think that Barbuda has a role to play too. Mm -hmm. It's just for us to incorporate them, youth in the, the square footage that's available yeah. to them. You've mentioned on several occasions that agriculture is about where to plant and when to plant. So you use the McDonald calendar a lot no, how no, I don't. Oh, my, my, my parents use that. My <laughs> grandparents use that. I know, I know. My, my, mother, my mother used it too. Um, <laughs> when I grew up with uh, the McDonald's, uh, uh, Almanac was the thing. But you said not to throw the bath water. <laughs> no. So why that. would you throw the McDonald's calendar? McDonald's calendar was the hottest thing growing up. Because at Farraga Farms, uh -huh. we have a pact with the Lord, with God Almighty. Yes. That we will plant no matter what the conditions are. Mm -hmm. And he will send rain. Mm. So you will do the planting and he will send the rain. He will provide. So I'm not going to wait for ideal conditions to plant. Yes. I have a timeline. I have a timeline to plant and I'm yes. going to plant it. And it has worked for you. Yes, it has worked for me. Now, so my plan, my best planting days. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Those, are, those are my plant. best planting days. <laughs> Look, I don't want to laugh, but because this is a serious discussion. <laughs> you started, and I was waiting for you to stop, and then I realized you returned to the end of the week. So your best planting day is any day? Any day. Okay. <laughs> But I like I'm this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> okay, so you plant any day. Any day. And you get good results. I get good results. Well, listen, Jehovah says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And he says if we believe mm -hmm. faith as small as a mustard seed, you we can, can move, move mountains. mountains. So it seems as if I, you've been moving a lot of mountains. I, I leave it up to God. Yes. So That's it, it, it works on me. 
Yes. It works That's for me. Important. I have to plant every week. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to harvest every week. Yes. So therefore, we have to put in something <laughs> to get out something. Remember every we, day. When we talk about working to make money. Yes. That's the difference there. Yeah. So we have to get the work done to make the money. Because we don't just get yeah. money. You, you don't, don't just, just work. get money. You have to make the money. We have to make the and money. And that's what we do as entrepreneurs. Yeah, so exactly. I tell people, I don't have the luxury to be lazy and to be idle. Every day is a work so day for me. It's now, like every day, I may not be able to reap a harvest. Mm -hmm. But what happens is as you prepare, the Lord will add on to mm -hmm. that. China ranks first in worldwide farm output, primarily producing rice, wheat, potatoes, tomato, corn, and soya beans. And you said earlier that the Chinese get 22,000 pounds of potato per acre. Hectare. Per hectare. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? Uh, it's not difficult. 22,000 pounds? Um. Magazine Spore. Uh -huh. um, it's a magazine that is put out by the <coughs> Africa, Pacific, and the Caribbean APC countries. APC, yeah. Um, and they indicate that China is getting 22 tons from the hectare, which is 2.2 .2 acres. Yes. They're saying that in the Caribbean and the Pacific, we're only getting two to four ton maximum. So we're getting 18 ton less on the same square footage. So what than are the they Chinese. doing? What are they using? Okay. Um, it has a lot to do not only with what they use in regards to the soil, mm -hmm. but it has a lot to do with the timing of harvest. Timing. Yes. The some sweet potatoes can show signs of tubering mm -hmm. at three months that you can harvest okay. at three months. If you harvest them at three months, they'll be a particular size. They'll be smaller. Texture, taste. Texture, all that. But if you harvest them at six five months. months, six months, you're going to get a different size, yeah. different texture different taste. Yeah. All right? The Chinese are not disturbed when they get big potatoes. Our market, our housewives want two and three to make a pound. So the longer they remain in the earth, the smaller they are? No, the bigger. Uh -huh. The bigger they become. That's the logic. The, if, if you take them out at three months, you're going to get a small one. If you take it out at six months, that same small one now is almost weighing five pounds. Oh, so what you're saying is that because most people would prefer them smaller, they harvest them earlier than the farmers in the in, Caribbean in, 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 and in Africa and the Pacific countries. No. They, fa they harvest later than the farmers in the Pacific and the Caribbean. I the thought you said they, they harvest it every three months. No. I am saying that the potato can be. Okay, it you can, can be. It can be. So in our setting in the Caribbean, the, the people do go ahead and do it. Harvest them quickly. Yes. For a number of reasons too, not just to meet the housewives and, mm -hmm. and three, four pounds. All right? The, the Jacob Weevil. Oh. All of that. Mm -hmm. um, as the plant gets older, the toxicity in the stems mm -hmm. that would ward off the Jacob Weevil becomes weakened. Become weakened, yes, mm -hmm. the, the, from the photoperiodic arm. Um, Mm -hmm. activity in the branches, photosynthesis, we yeah. call it. Mm -hmm. So the potato vine now gets more accommodating to the weevil and the weevil goes in. Oh. You, you have to treat that. You have to use insecticide now to kill that weevil, which has a 48-day um, breeding cycle. And it's cycle. going to affect the potato? 
No, it wouldn't affect the potato. It's no. killing the weevil because the weevil is what affects the potato. But the weevil is not already in the potato? No. Okay, the weevil is you in have to the vine. Yeah, yeah, you have to tackle it before ah. it goes into the potato. Timing is timing, 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 Oh, timing. boy. So once it is done right, the Chinese can keep their potatoes in the field, what? Longer. Mm -hmm. So they get bigger. So they get the, they get the poundage now. Mm -hmm. So they can go into processing with the bigger ones and then the smaller ones they can put into the supermarkets. Ah. You see? So, so, you, so you, you get the poundage. So, they, they, so it's twofold for them. You have the bigger ones for the processing and the smaller ones to satisfy for housewives. the housewives and the other consumers who want smaller potato. So, no, no. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. <laughs> And it works like that. <laughs> so, 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 so there you go. It, it's just to understand it. It's just like when we were going to school, Paula. Yes. Teacher said to us, um, if it takes two men two days to dig a trench X by Y long, how much will it take one man? And we just double, we just multiply, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not really true. The one man might take three days it's 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 new maths now mm -hmm. the one man might take three days because what we have to take into consideration because we're wiser now number of factors yeah. number of factors fatigue mm -hmm. stress because the he, weather is he one have to take up yeah. all the things so the weather you, yeah. you might say before it was two men do this amount yeah. but one man could, could take two days he then can do it in one day one, no he might take three because all those other factors weather Mm -hmm. stress, fatigue, and so on. Have to go and get lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All the things, you know what I mean? It's him, yeah. him alone. So he take a longer rest period. So we figure if two men can do it in two days, That's what then we were one person, we just double it. So yeah. one person... Simple match. Yeah. But it's not simple as that. Yeah. It's yeah, not true. It's it's not true because you fatigue coming and stress. Yeah. And so this is the real world situation now, mm -hmm. not the paper. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. He's out there now, so now he's working, yes. his shirt done wet down. Mm -hmm. So you have to come out of the hole and do what? Mm -hmm. Take off his shirt, put on a dry shirt, mm -hmm. leave that shirt to dry. Whatever factors that come yeah. into play. Mm -hmm. Some rain come, so the mud is more. Yeah. He can't throw it as far with the shovel. Yeah. You have to take a bucket now. To, Oh my, you're wearing me though. Yeah, oh, so there you go. <laughs> so you understand why. Yes, I understand. But given our close association mm. with China, shouldn't we be more advanced with our solutions in the agriculture sector? I believe so. I objectively believe so. We should be because more advanced. Because from only. my readings, mm. agriculture is a vital industry in China. And China ranks first in worldwide farm output. Therefore, if we are so closely connect, if we are so closely connected to China, we should benefit from that expertise. I am not going to say yes at this point in time. Are the benefits that we we'll receive from um, the Chinese because we're talking about lands and. I strongly believe that a lot of these lands, our forefathers would have worked for us to inherit yeah. them and to benefit from them. Mm -hmm. I think that education is important, that we need to retrain our people. We need to re-educate our people to think different. Remember I said to you before, what a yeah. man is taught determines what he believes mm -hmm. and what a man believes determines how he behaves. Yes. I am saying our people needs to be taught differently. Yes. to believe differently, to behave differently. And the land should be important to us. We should be given the opportunity to utilize the lands that are state-owned. And markets should be made available to us via the very relevant and we authorities. And national agricultural plan. Policy, a uh, national policy, policy plan. Yes. And yes. incorporate as much people. Get a big think yes. tank. Don't get a, a few. Yes. Get a big think tank and incorporate a lot more people so that we can... Even people who are not farmers. Yes. So that you get that In out of the box. Ah, you need that. Opinion. Because for me, I'm saying to mm -hmm. you, 
I, I am into production. I don't like to leave my farm, you know, <laughs> even to sell you anything. I am into production. So my son yeah. does what? He does marketing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I allow him to sell everything. I don't care mm -hmm. about that. I am producing. So if so you look and at as it, long as you're producing <laughs> and you're getting it sold, that's all you I'm saying. You continue to produce. produce. You're like the, you're like you're like your um, heifers. Yeah, exactly. They mate. <laughs> they're comfortable. They produce. Sometimes well, you one, have two calves yeah. in one. Can year. it? It, 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 it has happened. It has Because we are producing our own food. Yes. And we're producing enough to feed the entire to state be and even to and export. even to export. We have, we have large tracts of land in Antigua Paula that can be used for agricultural purposes. We no. have areas in Antigua that can grow things that cannot be grown um, in Anything. some other parts of the world. Yeah. Don't worry about it. After these two conversations, part one and part two mm. of the Paula show tonight, more people will be learned. Mm -hmm. I can't shake your hand mm -hmm. because of social distancing and everything. But guess what? It has been our pleasure to have you on the Paula Show tonight. I want to thank you very much, and I wish the farmers all the best. And if you want me to be your peer and your marketing manager, we can engage in well, a serious have, conversation. So yes. No problem. All right. Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show. Have a good evening. Goodbye. Show.